Hey creators, welcome back to the channel. Today we are putting four face swap techniques head to head Hyperlora, Instant ID, Pool ID, and ACE. To make this comparison fun and relevant, I pick photos that cover most situations. That includes some tricky cases like when part of the face is blocked, when a face is turned at a large angle, or when the lightings and the shadows on a swap face are very different from the original. By doing both text to image and image to image comparisons. First up, let's look at the text to image side. Okay, technically, this isn't exactly face swapping. Here's how it works We upload an image as a face reference. Then we write a prompt describing what we want the final image to look like. The models then generate images based on that face reference and the prompt. Keep in mind, you need to plug an image into its image KPS port. For this test, I use an image made by the Hyperlora setup. Why? Because Instant ID uses that actual image to figure out the person's pose. Without it, Instant ID can only make headshots, not half body or full body pictures. Now let me show you what stood out in the result. First up, Hyperlora follows your prompt much closer. It's also way more flexible with hairstyles than Instant ID or Pool ID. Check this out. The original girl has black hair. My prompt asks for short pink hair. Pool ID's image kept the hairstyle really similar to the original. Hyperlora and Instant ID both gave short hair, but look closer, Instant ID's version still has black underneath the pink. Pool ID almost perfectly copies the hairstyle and the face angle from the original image. Hyperlore and Instant ID didn't. See how the woman from Pool ID looks straight at the camera, just like the reference? But the women from Hyperlore and Instant ID have their heads turned slightly. This next example confirms it again. Pool ID and Instant ID struggle to change the original hairstyle. See how the generated heads sit weirdly? They look too far back on the head. Only Hyperlora's head placement looks relatively natural. Here's another big plus for Hyperlora. It makes images with richer details and better lighting shadow effects than Instant ID. This is a fair fight because they use the same SDXL model in my setup. Look at this navy uniform example. Hyperlora nailed the details on the upper lats, belt, and the head page way better than Instant ID. Honestly, it looks better than Pool ID here too. But hold on, Pool ID used the Fox model underneath, so comparing its image quality directly to SDXL based Hyperlora and Instant ID isn't really fair. Hyperlora also builds richer background elements compared to Instant ID. Let's look at one more example. Which image do you think looks better? Overall, Hyperlora has a slight edge over Instant ID. Notice how the person Instant ID generated has a squinty eyes. Hyperlora's woman looks right at us. Yep, this other example shows the same thing. So for text to image generation, I highly recommend Hyperlora. The Kung UI Hyperlora project page on GitHub has several ready to use workflows. Go grab them and try it yourself. Now let's dive into image to image face swapping. Here's the base image I uploaded. And this is the face reference we are swapping in. This whole workflow is designed to put this face onto the woman in my original image. This time, I added ACE Plus to the mix. I didn't use it earlier because it only works for image to image swaps. After running tons of tests and comparing results, here's what stood out. First up, Instant ID does a bad job with portraits where the face is turned at angles. ACE Plus comes next, then Pool ID, and finally Hyperlora. Check this example. The far left image is our face reference. Look at these two outputs from Hyperlora and ACE Plus. The head angles look totally unnatural. Pool ID is okay, but the face itself doesn't resemble our reference at all. Honestly, Pool ID struggles to keep faces consistent in image to image swaps, so I'm dropping it from the rest of the examples. Here's another test. See how smoothly Instant ID and ACE Plus handles the angled face? Meanwhile, the faces made by Hyperlora still look a bit unnatural. 
This is an extreme case. It really shows the difference. That said, when faces are front-facing, instant ID similarity to the reference isn't as strong as Hyperlore or ACE Plus. In those cases, the faces generated by Hyperlore and ACE Plus look more like the original. Look at this example. I think Hyperlore and ACE Plus capture the original face much better than instant ID here. Now here's something cool. When swapping faces with objects blocking them, like this woman holding a flower near her face, AC Plus shines brightest. It leverages the flux field model to actually recreate that flower during the swap. Hyperlore and Instant ID both missed it completely. Similar situation here. Notice how AC Plus reconstructed these dangling pro strands. Hyperlore and Instant ID didn't pull that off. One more interesting find, Instant ID and Pool ID blend swapped faces into the original lighting really naturally. But Hyperlore and AC Plus sometimes don't do as well in this regard. See this shot? The skin tones from Hyperlore and AC Plus look too pale and cold. They just don't match the warm golden light on the surrounding skin. So there you have it, each tool shines in different scenarios. For text to image, Hyperlora delivers the best detail and prompt flexibility. For image to image swaps, Instant ID handles extreme angles brilliantly, while AC Plus excels when faces are partially blocked. Try them yourself, grab the workflows from the links below and experiment to see which fits your creative needs.